Welcome to Austrian Creations. Today we're going to go through the correct, proper procedure for breaking down a Ruger Mark III 22 pistol and clean it, oil it, reassemble it, and get it ready for the next day at the range. Come on and join us. Okay, first thing we do, check that the gun is safe, it's not loaded. Magazine is empty, chamber is clear, magazine well is clear. Alright, now the Ruger Mark III has to have the magazine in, uh, in battery or in place before you can pull the trigger before it'll before it will fire um, so that's the only reason I have the magazine in, in the gun while I'm breaking it down because you have to have it in there to once you clear the chamber the uh, weapon will of course be cocked so you have to drop the hammer in a safe direction there's nothing in front of me, nobody obviously. Alright, then we remove the magazine. Alright, now on the Ruger, you'll notice on the on the back strap of the grip, there's a lever. That is the uh, main strength main spring housing. You can get your fingernail under it and pull it up. And once you pull it up, it'll swing out. Now it's a simple matter. If the gun's new, it's gonna be very stiff. And you might have to actually get a piece, a brass drift, and tap on the pin at the top to get it loose. But when they're new, they're very tight. But I take two fingers over the mainspring housing, take my thumb on the bottom of the grip, and squeeze until I can pull it loose. Sometimes it's harder than other times. Okay. Once you've got that loose, we're going to set it aside. Now, to get the uh, receiver, the barrel assembly, off the frame, I hold, put my thumb in front of the trigger guard and hold the, uh, hold the across the top of the receiver, across the barrel assembly. Take the palm, the heel of my palm with the other hand and tap it on the, on the breech face. And it's just enough to knock it forward a little bit bring the grip the uh, frame off of the barrel receiver assembly and then the slide or I'm sorry the bolt just extends to the rear now this you can clean it from here this will get you access to the chamber to the barrel through the breech and inside the assembly of the frame assembly however if you want to go a little farther it's a simple matter of removing two more parts now the uh, bolt return spring you just take your thumb to the rear of it and slide it forward slightly until you see it release from the uh, boss at the bolt and then pull it up and it will roll right off and then you just remove it from the bolt. Set it aside. Now, inside, you can see the firing pin, the striker. That's a simple matter of removing that. If you can take your thumb or a fingernail and push forward on it slightly, you'll see it slide forward slightly, just enough to take the pressure off of the pin. And I take a drift and slide it through and if you do that then you know that it's you know there's no way that it's going to 
fly off when you pull this out because you still have a pin in there. And then I put my thumb across to hold everything in place when I remove the drift. From there, the firing pin can slide up and the firing pin return spring. Don't lose that. That's going to be up uh, beneath the firing pin. And there's actually, let's see if I can fish it out. A little metal plate and that's what holds the spring don't lose that so we're going to set that aside all right at this point you've got it broken down as far as you should ever need to take this uh, this firearm there's no reason for you to ever have to break it down any farther than this if you're not a gunsmith no reason to get into the uh, trigger mechanism. Um, there are pins and springs in there that uh, will be very easily lost. Or if you put it back together wrong, then you make a dangerous situation. Cause misfire or cause it to not fire at all. This, all right. I'm kind of old school. Everybody likes, uh, every day there's a new company coming out with the, the handiest, newest uh, chemistry to clean and maintain your firearms. I'm old school. I like hops number nine. I guess uh, happy with it and have been for years, so I suppose I'll stick with it. But I'll take and... Put the uh, solvent on the areas that have carbon buildup. Let it soak for a minute while I do the rest of the gun. Now the way I normally do this, you don't have to let it sit long. Typically when I do a gun, I'll start at one piece, put the solvent on, and by the time I have finished putting solvent on the areas of all the gun, the first parts are ready to start cleaning. Pay particular attention to the breech face. Because you cannot remove the extractor. So uh, you're going to have to clean around it uh, while it's in place. Okay, I'll be right back. Once I get all the parts solving it up, and we'll go a little farther. Okay, when you are ready to brush your barrel, I'll take just a little bit of solvent and put it in the barrel. Doesn't take much. Here's the thing, folks, when you when you're using solvent, use just enough. All right, you'll make sure that your rod is long enough. You don't ever want to turn around a brush, change directions of a brush, while it's in your barrel. Now, if you want to uh, just use a swab, and I don't use a brush every time, man, but, like, but make sure that your brush comes completely out of the barrel before you change directions. And to be honest with you, it's, it's actually better to not go in both directions. To... Uh, you want to slide the brush through. Remove it from the rod. Then remove the rod. Make sure that your rod is always a softer material than your barrel. You don't want to cause any nicks inside the barrel. I think maybe one more pass should be plenty. And I never go in the muzzle. I never run a rod in from the muzzle. Um, you're taking a chance of sliding the rod, even a softer metal. But if you think about it, the, the muzzle is the last place 
that uh, your firearm has any contribution to what the projectile does. That is the absolute last place that it has any influence over the uh, flight of the projectile. And if you have the slightest nick on that muzzle, on the crown, then at the last second, when it's the most important part of the of the uh, firing uh, operation, it will influence the projectile adversely, cause it to be inaccurate. And this is especially true for you guys who are shooting uh, long-range rifles. That crown is the absolute very very important protect it at all costs okay now when you're using solvent don't paint this thing down with solvent you don't need it it's wasteful on top of that when um, when you do if you paint it down with solvent then you got to remember that you've got to clean every bit of that solvent up because it's going to break down the oil that you put on the gun once you've finished it. And we're not going to put but just a couple of drops on this thing. A lot of people, the biggest problem that people have with cleaning guns is they put too much oil on. Now use a swab. You can use a patch. Um, oftentimes I'll roll a patch up and stick it in the barrel then push it through with the uh, rod or the brush but I have a swab for this and the swab's not as big a deal as the brush but I still don't want to bring it back through and that is clean but I think I'm going to stick it through one more once You can overclean a gun. And if you have a, a sight optics, make sure you protect it from any solvents because they can attack the plastics that are involved. And, the coating is on any glass that you have on there and that could cause you expensive problems so. set that aside okay I'm gonna wipe this down real good and I'll be right back and we can start reassembly Okay, we get this here to show a little contrast so that you can see. This is your slide return spring and the little plate that uh, the guide rod that holds it. You'll notice that there's one end is tapered down and the spring will fit right up over that taper. Now on the other end, if you'll notice, there's a bend to it. It's got a little dog leg to it. If you can see that. You want that bend, that angle, to go down in the slot in the bolt. It has to be pointing down. Okay. And then you want to slide that assembly forward in that slot. And when you do, at the front of the slot, there's a little detent up under the uh, a lip at the front that that will catch under. Now on the firing pin, set that down for just a second, on the striker you'll notice that it has at the bottom it has a little ledge that has a bit of a tooth on it. All right, that catches the spring. That captures the other end of that spring. So we'll drop it on and slide it forward and you should feel 
spring tension. And you'll notice that as I push forward, it wants to push back. All right, so far, so good. So we want to slide the firing pin forward, and then you can take the pin, retaining pin, and just slip it right back into the bolt through the firing pin. And then when you release the pressure, release pressure off the back of the firing pin, that pin will capture it. Now make sure that it is not poking outside the block on the uh, bolt on either side because that could uh, scar the inside of your receiver and uh, could cause it to jam. And uh, you likely are wanting to get it in if it does uh, protrude proud. Okay, now once you've got the firing pin in, we're going to take our bolt return spring and guide rod. And if you'll notice, we're going to a half moon shape with a little uh, tab on the bottom. Okay, now if we remember, that just drops into the slot at the front of the bolt over the firing pin. The half moon circle pointing up to match the contour of the exterior of the bolt. Uh, and again, just like we took it apart, we'll take our front thumbnail push down on the, the guide rod until it compresses somewhat and then when we release it it's going to be caught under the lips at the rear of the bolt. That is the bolt assembly reassembled. Now you ask about the oil there's very little oil that we put on here. Now I like TriFlow, but it's not my favorite applicator. This is hard to get a small drop out of this, so you just have to be careful. You can get one of the uh, uh, hypodermic type applicators, or this actually comes with a small tube that uh, a straw that works well, but that's been gone. So I want to put a single drop on the front of the bolt and, and rub it around with my gloved hand. Now that's going to pull a lot of the oil off onto my glove, but it's going to leave a very thin film on the bolt, and that's all you need. Um, when the worst thing, about the worst thing you can do is over oil again because the oil acts like a magnet for dirt. And then once you get the dirt sticking into it, it will act as sandpaper and just wear it out. All right. Now, I told you before when we started taking this apart that the uh, Ruger Mark III has to have the magazine inside the magazine well before you can move the trigger uh, fire it. and that's important because if you can't get the the uh, hammer back then into the right position then we can't get it reassembled put the magazine in again ensuring there's no ammunition in it when you clean the gun you don't want any ammunition on the table at all and we want to slide, pull the trigger back and move the hammer so that it was in the same position it was in when you disassemble it. And if you look inside, there's the uh, connector spring, uh, rod that connects the hammer to the main spring. Hang on. Now when you're reassembling, you need to make sure that the, the uh, firing pin, I'm sorry, the hammer spring connector which is this black little black rod right there it will get hung behind this little pin and if you're not careful it'll be stuck back there and you will never get the mainspring housing back into the frame when you reassemble it so if you'll see, it's the connector that goes to the hammer. So 
see it moving. Right there. Okay. Cleaning. Now, at the front of the uh, milled area in the receiver, you'll notice a, a, a uh, indent. And then you've got a hook on the frame that will fit right in place. Okay. And then just a tap on the barrel, we'll slide it back into position. Now this is the trickiest part of the entire build. Remember the uh, connector that I pointed out to you a few minutes ago. Let's make sure that the hammer is up out of the way so that the connector doesn't get caught behind that pin. All right. Now the retaining pin make sure that it goes through the hole in the bottom of the frame and you'll have to do some working to make it fit because it is always a bear and the newer the gun is the more of a problem it can be Snap it through the top. Again, check the hammer uh, mainspring connector. Make sure that it's free. And when you slide this in, you should feel some tension. That last little bit. See where it's holding off? If you don't have that, then you've got to pull it back and try it again. You have not caught the connector. So push it in. Slide the lever in till it clicks. Now if you don't have it assembled right, the slide will not even operate. The bolt won't move to the rear. But it appears that I got it together right. Slide the, ma the empty magazine again. Empty magazine into the magazine well. Point in the safe direction. Make sure that it operates. And it catches back on the last shot. That's correct. Now, don't ever drop the, uh, on any, any automatic, any semi-automatic, don't drop the slide by the release. Always pull it to the rear and then drop the release. And when you let go, let it spring forward on its own. If you drop the, uh, let the uh, slide travel forward by pulling the release, Every time you do that, you're scraping a little metal off the face of that that uh, detent, and eventually it'll wear out so that it will not catch the slide or the bolt. There it is. There's the Ruger Mark III, disassembled, cleaned, and reassembled.